Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep or until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in the book of Georgian folklore, written down by Marjorie Waldrop. In this story, the prince is unable to find love until he unseals his fate and stabs a sick lady. Okay, let's begin. Fate There was once a mighty king who had only one son. When the son grew up, every princess fell in love with him. The king was very desirous that his son should be settled early in life. He chose for him a princess, whom he proposed he should marry. The son objected very much, saying, It is not my fate to be united to this maiden. I shall not marry her. Sometime after this, the youth came to his father and said, I entreat you, let me go forth and seek my fortune, and give me three bags of money. The king granted his request. The prince prepared everything and set out on his journey. He traveled until he met a stranger. This stranger was an angel, clad in the form of a man. He inquired of the prince, Where are you going? What do you seek? The prince told him all, and that he wished to learn what was written in the book of fate for him. Then this stranger showed him a beautiful palace and said, There you will learn your fate. The prince thanked him and set out for the palace. When he arrived in the courtyard, he looked around and saw notes lying about. He began to examine them, but for a long time he searched in vain. Then another man came there from the palace and said to the prince, What do you want, brother? What do you seek? The prince answered, I am looking for the letter in which my fate is written. Why do you search there? Those are only poor folk's fates. King's fortunes are written inside. Come with me and I shall show you yours, said the unknown man. The prince entered the house. The unknown man searched for his fate and called him. Inside was written, Such and such a prince will marry a weaver's daughter, who has been ill for nine years. As he read this out, the prince was struck with horror. I shall change my fate, said the prince to himself. He took his letter of fate and went to seek the weaver's daughter. He went on and on, and was in a thick forest when the shades of evening fell. He wandered on in hope of finding shelter, and at last he saw a glimmer of light. He came to a hut and asked permission to remain there during the night. The master of the house replied, Son, you are a great man. We have nothing befitting your rank, but we can give you the best we have, for a guest is a gift of God. The prince stayed there that night, and his host grudged him nothing. When they had finished supper, the prince noticed that somebody was having a meal in another room. He said to his host, I hope that you will not think of me as inquisitive if I ask who is in the other room, and what is the meaning of this? Then the host told him the following tale. I am a weaver, and I can barely live from day to day. God has given me nobody to help me in my work. I have only a daughter, and she is very ill. For nine years she has not risen from her bed. I can assure you, she gives me no help. When the prince heard this, he bit his little finger with vexation and became melancholy. He did not close his eyes that night. He was thinking all the time how he might get rid of his fate. In the middle of the night, when everyone was snoring and sleeping like the dead, the prince rose silently, stole from his bedchamber, and quietly entered the room of the weaver's daughter. When he saw her, he was inwardly troubled. He drew forth his dagger and plunged it into her. Then he noiselessly went away, left his money behind him, and stole forth into the night. He went home to his father and complained of the evil fate written for him. His father was very indignant at this, but hid his anger and comforted his son. Some time passed. One day, the prince went out to hunt. He saw in a lonely wood a beautiful palace, and in the palace a maiden as fair as the sun. The prince could have gazed on her beauty forever. He looked for a long time, then, looking from a distance, would not satisfy him. He spurred his horse 
and when he came near, he was even more struck with the loveliness of the maiden. He descended from his horse, came to her, and asked her to marry him. When he had heard with joy her sweet words of consent, he gaily went home. On the way, his head swam with pleasure at the thought of the welcome change. Instead of the unhappy fate promised to him, he was to have such a beautiful wife. He told his father what had happened to him, and asked him to prepare for the wedding. The king rejoiced at the happiness of his beloved son, and made preparations for a grand wedding. Some days after they were married, the prince laid his hand on his lovely wife's heart, and felt something hard like a wart. He said, What is this? His wife replied, I am a poor weaver's daughter. For nine years I lay in a bed, a helpless invalid, yellow as a cucumber. Once there came a youth to my father's house for shelter. He plunged his dagger into me, then fled with haste and went on his way. I was very sick, but my mother put a plaster on my side and I was completely cured. The guest left three bags of money behind him, and with these we bought a beautiful palace. My father gave up weaving, and we lived without a care. When the prince heard this, he said, Oh, God, thy decrees are not vain and futile. Then he told his beloved wife all that had happened to him. The End I'm so happy for the happy ending of this story, but if I was the weaver's daughter, I'd think twice about marrying the guy who stabbed me while I was sick in bed. Still, it's fun to read stories like these, and I hope you're enjoying them too. And the podcast shout-out is to Reddit on Wiki. Hosts John, the Punny Pinoy, Josh, the Sweet International host, and your boy Sean, Houston's finest, gang up with a rotating cast of advice givers and work through your weirdest Reddit stories and give you the best advice three cis-hetero partnered men can give. And it is really good. Like, these guys are really think about it and they're super kind. And so if you like their show as much as I do, go and give them a like, a rating, an agtha, and a review. And the listener shout-out is to Thiruvan Anathapuram, or Trivandrum. It is the capital of the southern Indian state of Kerala. The meaning of the city's name is the city of Lord Ananta. It's distinguished by its British colonial architecture and many art galleries. It's also home to the Kuthira Malika, or Puthan Malika Palace, adorned with carved horses and displaying collections related to the Travancore royal family, whose regional capital was here from the 18th to 20th centuries, according to Google. It's also where a fun drama called The Good Karma Hospital is supposed to be set. And of course, I would love to visit there. I wonder if folks ever get tired of me saying that. And so, I'm going to say this in Malayalam. To my listeners in Thiruvanavana Atharapuram, I say, Nandi and Shubhra Ratri. Thank you and good night.